We now know everybody who's going to be on the ticket in November. Vice President Kamala Harris chose Governor Tim Walz for her running mate this week. And former President Trump announced his choice for Vice President Senator J.D. Vance during the Republican convention. So let's talk about the picks. Ed Espinoza and Matt McCoviak are here for the discussion. Ed, beginning with you, Governor Walls of Minnesota, is he a good pick? Yeah, I really like Governor Walls as the vice presidential pick for Kamala Harris. Um, like a lot of America, I didn't know a lot about him until about a week ago, but I was pleased to see him land on the ticket. What I really like that he brings is the Midwestern values that he represents. He grew up in small town Nebraska, represents Minnesota, and is known for a being straight. Uh, he is known for straight talk and no nonsense and very easy to get along with. Had a very good bipartisan uh, crew of bipartisan relationships in Congress, his 12 years in Congress. And so I think that that is an important thing for the Democratic ticket. I also just think it's good for Americans to see a Midwestern dad on the ticket. So I, I'm pleased with this. I think you'll have a good connection with the working class, especially in states like Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan, right. maybe a few others as well. Okay. Matt McCoviak, for the Republicans, is Governor Walls a good pick? Yes. I'll give the rest of my time back to Ed. No, but <laughs> uh, you, look, I, I'll say this. Every single Republican who wants to see Trump win, in fact, I would argue every voter who wants to see Trump win, uh, breathes a sigh of relief that rather than choose the most popular Democratic governor in the country, uh, a Jewish American who'd been Attorney General of Pennsylvania, and a person that presumably would have almost certainly put Pennsylvania into the win column for Kamala Harris, uh, the Kamala Harris campaign. Um, in the end, they didn't make that selection. And so, look, if uh, Kamala Harris gets the 270 electoral votes without Josh Shapiro, this won't have mattered. Uh, if Trump wins Pennsylvania and wins the presidency, this will be the most second guest political decision of my lifetime. Uh, but it's not just that, it's that she was making a progressive choice. This was, I think, an overconfident choice. Ed's right that uh, Mike Walls, excuse me, Tim Walls had a uh, uh, somewhat mainstream Democratic uh, record in Congress when he represented a swing district that was, uh, that we had defeated uh, an incumbent Republican. Uh -huh. uh, he has been the most progressive governor in the, in the country the last okay. uh, several years, and his record is gonna be something we're gonna learn a lot more about. It's, okay. pretty, it's pretty left wing. Okay, Ed Espinosa, let's talk about the voters. With this pick of Governor Walls, who are the Democrats targeting a certain kind of voter with this pick? Can you expand on that? Well, I, look, I, in addition to balancing out the ticket, you've got somebody from big city California and somebody from Midwestern Minnesota. I think that that adds a broad array of life experiences on the ticket, as well as Washington experience, by the way, that makes somebody like Kamala Harris and Tim Walls ready to step in and govern on day one. But beyond that, something that I think is really important, look, Tim Walz does have some progressive voting record, uh, supported abor abortion rights, legalized marijuana, supports public education. Yes, those are progressive issues. They're also highly popular mainstream issues. And I think that that is gonna be something that a lot of Americans notice. And I gotta come back to the working class thing. Democrats have struggled with the working class over the past eight to 10 years. And Tim Walls, I think, can really help build a bridge with that community. And that's not somebody that, uh, that's, you know, you're not going to overwhelmingly win the working class, but you've got to be able to make an effort and connect with them. I think Governor Walls can help do that. And again, in those industrial states, okay. Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Okay, Matt, talking about which voters to target for Trump and the Republicans, with this pick of Governor Walls, do their targets change, or who are they trying to target now? Well, as I said before, I think it increases the importance of Pennsylvania. I don't know that you could have had, you know, needed to increase it. It was always the the, the crown jewel. Uh, you can actually, uh, you can look at the map. If Kamala Harris were to win Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, and Michigan, but Trump wins Pennsylvania, Trump wins 270, 268. That's how crucial Pennsylvania is. Uh, but look, this, this race is gonna come down to 30 or 40 counties in, in those seven battleground states. It's gonna come down yeah. to swing voters or low propensity voters. It's gonna come down to yes, white working class voters. Trump has to overperform in the rural areas. Uh, Kamala Harris has to overperform in the urban areas. 
and then the, the battle will be in the suburbs. I mean, that's an, that's an oversimplification, but that's true. But look, what Kamala Harris has done is she's increased the enthusiasm among the Democratic constituencies. Uh, what's not clear is that she's that she's improved the path the Democrats have to 270 electoral votes, or that she's a better candidate to go after swing voters, actually, than even Joe Biden was. And I don't think Mike Waltz makes it easier to go after those swing voters because his okay. record in Minnesota, as I said, as governor, has been very, very, very liberal. It's not just the things Ed said. It's the riots that he didn't send the National Guard in on. It's trans stuff. It's okay. COVID stuff where he was doing snitching and all kinds of all crazy right, we're, things. We're, so his record is going to get a lot of inspection. We're, we're going to have time to go through that uh, in the coming weeks. Right now, we got to wrap it up, but it's going to be interesting. Ed, Matt, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thanks.